are now live and on lockdown. Are you ready? Ready, ready? Broadcasting from Edinburgh, Scotland and across the globe. Listen here. You're listening to Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders podcast. The host, Rosa Ramsey. Hi, this is Afia Letha from KingdomBeats.com. Proud to be a sponsor of Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders. Uh, good day and welcome to another edition of Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders. We have a few changes going on. Uh, we have certainly, we're not going to be on our standard platform of Hearts On Live anymore. We have, we're taking to pastors new. Things have grown. Uh, we have, the community has grown. And it's time to for the next chapter and see how things develop. It's all about uh, moving forward in life. You've got uh, things, you have to start things and you have to also say goodbye to things. Uh, the only way to, is to, uh, main thing is to improve what you do and to climb the ladder. Because if you don't improve and you, you stay static, you're never going to grow in business or in your brand or whatever you do in life. It's all about setting, setting the bar, setting challenges in your life and, and what you want to do. And that's the main thing. So we, I have another guest uh, coming up. We will have our usual uh, sixty-second singing tip with Benita Charles. Um, and what she and we'll have her usual motivation uh, tip, which is great. Supporting what she does, she's all the way from New York. We also have some music from uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Sullivan. Uh, so we'll have one of his tunes, which would be great. But if we have time in the show, we will play another one. But uh, we also have our many supporters, our sponsors of Kingdom Beads. We also have um, Eileen Smith and Guy R. Cook. We have Ideas Go Live from John Drummond. We have many, many people who we'll mention later on properly in the show. But my guest today is none other than Darren King, all the way from Australia. But he's not currently in Australia at the moment. He's currently in the UK, hence we are on the same time zone, which helps. It means I'm not up late and he's not getting out of his bed early, which is a good thing. So uh, it means we can get this interview done and we can talk about his brand, talk about his... Uh, the inside out, his fitness and what he does and why he does it and what his goals are. So we'll welcome Darren King to the Ramsey on East Going Beyond Borders. How are you doing? Ramsey, fantastic. Uh, phrase, I, should say. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got mixed up with those two occasions. But no, I'm, I, mate, I'm privileged to be here. And, mate, whether I was in London right now, which I am with you, or whether I was in Australia and it was two in the morning, three in the morning, it had been an absolute pleasure to be on your show because I've heard so much about you. We've spoken. I see some brilliant stuff, what you do, and I agree with you. You've got to step backwards a little bit to go forward. You've got to do changes. You've got to get a comfort zone, do something different against the norm to get a, a better and greater result moving forward. Well, let's uh, well let's kick off. With what, give us an insight to Darren King. Who is Darren King? Because the Darren King, it seems it's a good name. It's a kind of, you're the king. So give us the insight how you have risen to your, through your challenges. Yeah, I am the king, and it's uh, it's funny because I used to be a person that wouldn't want to, you know, express myself and show off and that sort of stuff. But I've learned a lot about you got to be appreciate who you are and love yourself. And I am the king of fitness, and that's actually the branding's changing a little bit at the moment with some coaches I've got. And I really recommend having a mentor or a coach, no matter what you're doing in this world, and especially for those people that are struggling out there, you want to have some sort of, you know, someone to help pull you forth because it's very hard very tough as you probably know phrase about doing stuff by yourself and so the king of fitness has turned into the king of spiritual fitness and it's mainly because of what i've been through in the last 20 years or so doing my business is i used to focus all about the outside and that's why we're talking about the inside outside today is because i was really struggling on the inside and i see so many clients and so many other people doing that really struggling internally and people don't see what's going on and you have all the suicide and all this depression going on mm -hmm. and we don't actually see – we see people on the outside. We don't actually even – we've got no idea sometimes what's really going on. And I was in that stage, you know, the depression, the suicidal thoughts, um, t taking tablets, drinking, and, you know, everyone thought I was an absolute legend. I'm sure I was, but they didn't see the behind the scenes, behind the curtains, the struggles. And so I'm really huge on working on mindset, like um, meditations. What's worked for me in the past and I've seen with clients is – the meditation, the the personal growth, which you'd probably appreciate, the, you know, the reading, the the environment, be, you know, hanging around. Like I love coming to London because I, I meet people like yourself or, you know, last night I was at a Speakers Academy event and it was all about energy and, all, you know, hugs and 
all this environment, and you know, I'm really pulled to that. That's why I'm back here. I mean, I've picked up a fiance along the way, which is a bonus. But <laughs> in, in, <laughs> yeah, you get, buy, buy a, a ticket and get yourself a, a future wife. Happy days. <laughs> well, and that's what happens when you get out of your comfort zone. I mean, I didn't want to book flights, I didn't want to pay for things, and the unknown is always scary. But yeah, I came over to do some speaking in Birmingham a couple of years ago. And the byproduct of that is now I've got an fiance I'm going to be marrying soon, sometime this year. But all these speaking gigs and the people I've met, and, and just the fact that I'm being here with you and we're helping out people um, shift their vibration and shift their wherever they, they are in the world is all all a byproduct of you and I getting out of comfort zones. This doesn't it just doesn't fall to you on a platter. You know you've got to step outside the box to to go the extra distance. And you know and and you're like me where we. We're trying to impact the world and make it a, make it an even better place. So and, and help all these people. So that's where I'm at. So tell us, uh, well, go into a bit of detail. But you twenty obviously twenty years ago, you've been going you, behind the stuff behind the curtain. What was it? You, how your feelings? What you were going through mentally? Uh, what you're going through, especially with drinking and tablets. Talk about that in depth a bit more. Yeah, it's one of those things where at the time it was an absolute nightmare and. You know, my body had broken down. I, you know, I got diagnosed with everything under the sun. I, it, I had chronic back pain, fibromyalgia, um, antidepressants. So I was popping all these tablets, drinking because I didn't want to deal with my emotion. I had a lot of emotions going on in the scenes. So, like I spoke about behind the curtains, I, I didn't even realise that um, I had a lot of stuff going on. That the car accident, I had a big car accident, and that was like a that just sort of ramped it, ramped things up, made me really aware and look at things. So I went along this sort of fine line between do I want to end my life or do I want to heal? Do I want to overcome this? Because the overcoming, going to see doctors and physios and chiros and, you know, all the professionals and at the end of the day, you've got to be able to help yourself. I mean, you know, this car accident was a real wake-up call because I was pretty much numb. And the funny thing is I didn't actually realise that, I didn't realize that I had stuff going on until the car accident, and then it was like amplified. And then it was either it was a do or die, pretty much, pardon the pun, but it was a do or die. It was like either I get out of this vibration, out of this negative space I was in, or um, that's it. There's, my, there's no point hanging around. I see people that, to be honest, they might as well not be here because they're Groundhog Day, they're struggling, they're internally, they're, they're just not here. And it's too hard basket to stay on this planet, and that's where I was at. And I remember being in bed, um, literally being in bed, and it's, oh, it's it was this fine line. I didn't, we didn't have Google back then. We're talking 20, 20 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. We didn't have Google, and thank goodness because I would have I would have researched how many tablets does it take. I don't know if you have Panadol, Paracetamol. How many Paracetamols does it take to actually end my life? And the fear part of it was, if I don't succeed, what will happen? Mm-hmm. So it was sort of like if I knew there was a guarantee, I would have done it. But because I didn't know how many do you need to take to finish, and if you don't do the job properly, where are you going to end up? Are you going to end up in a wheelchair? Are you going to end up, you know, re- mentally retarded? And the ironic thing is that's happened to a client my, with mine in the last year, mm-hmm. and I haven't spoken to him, and he's still struggling today. And this is like nearly a year ago since he went to commit suicide, and he he took so many tablets so many boxes of tablets, they thought that would have been a done deal. But the thing is, he actually survived. They had the, you know, he had liver damage or kidney, de- kidney damage. He had his esophagus is damaged, he, oh, just everything under the sun. So even today, he's still getting worked on. He's still having operations. He's still having all this. So is it, was it really worth it? I mean, yeah. he, he actually, sometimes he prefers that he's, he's not here because, you know, without going into it too much, that was – it was tough. It was um, really tough. And to get out of that, we should probably get asked for next, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now if you want to ask any questions. No, no, but, it's, yeah, good. That, just, it's good. To, I, just, I tend to let the – I tend to let you just go and talk because and, and people are here to listen to you, not me. So that's the main thing because it's good to hear – because it's having an insight, being knowing that you've obviously – you saw you, – I mean, what – well, let's say you – at what point did you actually suddenly think, right, no, this is it, I've got it, I can't do this, I've got to get up and move? Because having those suicidal thoughts, and many people do, and really thinking, 
I can't go on anymore. Uh, what was yeah. the key divining moment in your life that said, no, I've got to change? And what did you? What got you out of bed to sit, metaphorically, got you out of bed and said, yeah. What 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 triggered you to suddenly say no no let's not let's not suicide is not the answer, let's do this let's move forward. Okay, there was two two main things that stand out. Uh, I think I know which order they're in, but because it was so long ago, I'm not 100. percent But I'm pretty sure it was in this order. But what happened was I was actually seeing I've seen everyone psychologists psychiatrists all these professionals and to heal the body as well. Um, and what happened was they actually tried to hypnotize me. <laughs> and the ironic thing is I do hypnotherapy now. Right. And back then I was not open-minded. You, you cannot hypnotize anyone if they're not open to it. And I wasn't open to it. So here they were. They were getting frustrated because they couldn't hypnotize. And they said, we can't help you unless you help yourself. And that's what it's like if you're, a, if you're getting hypnotherapy. And so they said, look, back then – Look, I'm showing my age a bit, but the old the old audio cassette tapes. <laughs> you guys <said> this. <laughs> so we had the audio cassette tapes, and they actually gave that to me. I said, "Look, it didn't work here. Maybe if you try it at home by yourself." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, whatever. What's this shit?" You know, that's to be honest. Okay. And <laughs> so uh, I took it home, and I thought I thought it was going to be like one of these personal growth books that just sit on the shelves. And in the end, I was sitting there, and I thought, "Oh, you know, I might as well give this a shot and prove it's prove it's." so stupid anyway i did that and i thought oh well, it's actually reasonably relaxing and um i sort of thought i was still very uh skeptical and that sort of stuff but I, you know i did it for a couple of nights and i thought what have i got to lose and i had this ironic experience and listening to this audio tape so i took it to bed and it was talking about it split up the conscious and the subconscious and it spoke it got to the stage where it relaxed you and then it said Okay, and now we're going into the engine room. And it sounded weird at the time. So you were in a plane, and the engine room was in the plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they said, in this plane, you've got all these controls, you've got all these buttons, and you're in, you can do you can play whichever buttons, or you can be, you know, raise the levers, or you can do whatever you want in in the engine room, which is in the plane. And I said, it's completely up to you. If you want to amplify this, you can. It's like a radio station, probably. Um Anyway, and then so they said you can go up there, you can sail up this, you can do with it, and all this. It actually felt quite good that you you felt like you're in control. As I felt like I was in victim mode before that, mm -hmm. and I had this I had this sort of strange experience. And I will never forget it. A strange experience where I felt so calm and quiet internally that externally on the outside I could hear myself snore. <laughs> now. I had the, I had this sort of like stepping aside that I'm laughing at myself snoring. I don't know if it ever happened to you, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just it's never happened ever again. But I do remember that time, that turning point. I was like, "What the hell is that about?" I'm like, "How can I be actually having a little cackle to myself, a little laugh, saying you're actually snoring? I don't even think you're snoring. You're snoring. I can I can actually step out and yeah. How does that work?" But anyway, I just really, when I wake up, I thought, what the hell is that? And I thought, there's a bit more to this um, than what I thought. And then all of a sudden, I was a little bit more open-minded. And then this other thing happened. So I was already sort of like, well, I don't know. And then I remember, this, uh, it might have been the next day or two, or might have been a week later, but it wasn't too far away where... <clears throat> I was a little bit more open-minded. You know, when your receptors are open a little bit more, you start mm -hmm. to see differently? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I was walking past TV because back then I wasn't working. I was on, like, work cover, and then I ended up sickness benefits, and I was relying on the the, the government system. And um, so I didn't really, still didn't really have much of a life. But what happened was I walked past the TV, and I could hear this Indian professor guy talking. And... I was like, that sounds good. And it was just, you know, TV in the background. And it was Oprah Winfrey interviewing Dr. Deepak Chopra. Mm -hmm. You know, the Indian professor, Deepak yeah. Chopra? Yeah. So, and he had that calm voice, and it's all good, and you can overcome this. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was just sort of pulled into it. I sort of was doing my things, and then I sort of got like, oh, what's this? And then 
I actually sat down, which I hadn't really done much, and then I watched and I thought, wow. I only reckon I sat there for about 10 minutes, but whatever he was on, I wanted it. And he said, and I've got this book, Seven Spiritual Laws to Success. And I was like, I don't know what's in that book, <laughs> but I'm going to get it. <laughs> so literally I just left the TV on, got in the car, jumped off, went to the bookstore and found it. And I didn't care. It would have cost a thousand dollars or whatever. It was in that zone, you know, when you really want something. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, okay, whatever it costs, done, done deal. Because I had the I had the money mindset. I haven't got the money. Da, da, da. It's like whatever. Just going to get this book because it could be the could be the thing that turns my world. And then I discovered next to him meditation. I thought, oh, he's got a meditation book as well. Oh, and he's got this book and he's got that book, of course. <laughs> anyway, I grabbed the two books. I grabbed the the um that the seven spiritual laws of success and the the whatever principle was to meditation, easy meditation, or whatever it was at the time. Anyway, so uh, yeah, he brought, brought that. Oh, actually, no, got three books. Sorry about that. He also he also had one called uh, it was a, it was for insomnia because I had insomnia as well. Right. Okay. And it and it was called something like sleep easy, um, whatever it was. And I brought that home as well. So I started really getting into Deepak Chopra, and uh, the meditation I tried it. It didn't work the first time because I was trying to force it, force the issue. So I thought, well, that doesn't work. And mm-hmm. But the seven spiritual law of success, I started telling me what time to get to bed, what time to get up, how to get more balanced and more in tune with the world and that sort of stuff. And ironically, I started trying those principles and it actually started working really well. And then from there, I was still interested in meditation, wondering why that didn't work. And I went to a thing called transcendental meditation. I started um looking up yellow pages back then. I don't know if you have that here, but it was like a... <laughs> yeah, we do. To, yeah, yeah. Well, the yellow pages okay. used, to be able, used to be able to stack your yellow pages and stand on them uh, if you needed to oh. reach a higher shelf. Ah, yeah. But now yeah, I'm, a bit tall, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit taller than you. I know, but now, now the uh, yellow pages are the, the, are no no but no thicker or no bigger than a like a pad, a, a pad of A4 paper <laughs> that you buy in the shops to your state if you're at school. They're, they're, nobody uses them anymore. Mm. Oh, because it's not a store anymore. You can't get up high and reach up for the cupboard. Well, okay, got they're it. Just so they're, they're basically the size. They're they're they're, ha- they're like half the size of what they were, and about point one of a thickness of what they used to be. So it's like they're literally it's it's nothing. They're crazy. Yellow pages used to be, yeah, the, the main thing, but now they're not because everything's online these days. Hence the reason. <laughs> well, going back in going back in time. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So. And then I found this, uh, it's called Transcendental Meditation, TM Meditation. And that just that just seriously rocked my world. Uh, <clears throat> so what happened was I went to that meditation center and once again I paid, I don't know, 1,500 Australian, about 750 pounds. And I didn't have the money, but it was just like, wow, this thing could be really good. And then that seriously started to bring stresses my body. When I did a meditation, I'd have these physical um, rock and roll sort of, my body would shake and it was all these suppressed stresses that were coming to the surface and I explained it, but I didn't understand at the time until I started doing this meditation. It was pretty powerful that all these deep rooted stresses that were manifested in the body were starting to release and my body started shaking and doing all these freaky things and it was oh mate, I was just going with the waves. It was just I was just riding with the waves and just going with the flow and just Nothing to lose, syndrome, just went for that. And, yeah, so then I started to become a meditator. Um, I started to, you know, then I came across a thing called Landmark Education. Um, Started getting right into personal growth, reading Anthony Robbins, all this. And I realized that what really helped me heal Mm -hmm. wasn't nothing against the doctors, the physio, the chiros, and all those. But at the end of the day, if you've got deep rid of stuff and you're not prepared to, to confront it and deal with it and let it and let it mag and emotion as well and all this suppressed anger, um, no one can really help you. It's just like with the hypnotherapy, they can assist you, um, but it's still got to come from within you. That's why I see the environment is important, personal growth. Um, yeah, who you, who you hang around like I said before, meditation, any sort of balance or um, think good thing for insomnia that I've found was that to have a dumping session at night, a brain dump where you write things down. Let it out. If you wake up during the night, get it out, get it out of your head. Get it out of your head on the paper or just get it out. And that I help people heal just simply by doing that with the insomnias and, and that sort of stuff. So anyone has that, 
to let, not let it guarantee it, but I found it work for myself and others. All these tools um, that have helped relieve the inside, um, forgiving and letting go, parents, um, partners along the way or any of these stresses, stop sweating the small stuff. All these sort of things, you know. I I haven't got a down pat perfect yet. I still get stressed. I still get frustrated. I still get annoyed with people. Um, but I notice the I'll go things a lot easier, a lot smoother, and I'm so grateful for where I am compared to what I was 20, 25 years ago. And I feel fitter and stronger at 51 than what I was half my age at 25 back Good. then. I was more of a struggle at 20. I looked amazing on the on the outside, but the inside it was a, a struggle world. And uh, people couldn't see it, and I'm so glad that I'm open and honest and authentic enough to share this with you and all, the, all your all your listeners out there today. Well, we'll, we'll, go, we'll take a, what we'll do is we'll take a small break. We will come uh, with a bit of music from Andrew Sullivan and go give your love away. So we'll, we'll be back with uh, the set, uh, next stage of Darren's journey. Uh, we've just obviously covered the part from being how to basically to cure the inside before you can get uh, make the outside better and uh, obviously to so you can go forward so we've just covered that and how he the, what he the journey he went through just to get to that point so we're back after Andrew Sullivan's uh, uh, give your love away so we're back after this <laughs>
And welcome back to Ramsey and Leash Going Beyond Borders. Uh, that was Andrew Sullivan. Give your love away. Uh, we're, we'll be coming up later. We'll have a 60 second singing tip with Benita Charles, all the way from New York. Motivation. Um, she's great. Been fantastic listening to what she has with 60 seconds uh, in, in that slot, which is brilliant. I want to give thanks to a lot of our supporters. We have uh, Brent Mann, BrentMannMusic.com, who's been supporting us all the way, which is fantastic. Um, he is a country gospel artist, but it's great to have his support. EileenSmith.com. If you are keen to learn about live streaming and uh, from different platforms or podcasting, like things like Anchor, Spotify, etc., you can go to EileenSmith.com or you can find her on YouTube. Uh, she's got tests a lot of st- uh, platforms. And you'll learn a lot of how to take yourself forward in the live streaming universe. That is I L E A N E Smith dot com. So you can find her uh, either on her website or you can go to the, her YouTube channel on YouTube, and you'll find a lot of fantastic uh, information there to uh, take yourself forward. We also have Guy R. Cook, the Guy R. Cook Report podcast. Um, he, he, his podcasts are basically between no more than sort of five to ten minutes long at a push. And he talks about some BTB stuff, uh, SEO tips, about etc. Uh, etc. Et so you'll get some really good um, nuggets from the Guy R. Cook Report podcast. Or uh, shout out to John Drummond who does Ideas Go Live. If you're looking for web design, um, which is great. So oh, and it's if I did my he did my website for my business, which is fantastic. So if you're ever looking for web design locally in Edinburgh or maybe you're further afield and across the pond and you want to use them, you can. We also have a, recent, a couple of recent peeps. Uh, we've got uh, For Humanity, well, For Humanity is Shannon Griffin, who does t-shirt design uh, when she gives us her website. And as I subtly say that, I've pushed her several times to make kind of promote her website a little better and supporting what she did with my logo. Um, also, we have Curtis Brooks, Curtis Brooks Media Productions, who's recently uh, joined the supporting team of Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders. He is Media Production. Also, he does websites as well, a lot of videos. If you're looking for something to be done, he can help you out. He does voiceovers as well. He's got that natural voice that you can click for any advert to help promote your business. We have quite a few here. We've well, got a lot of people supporting us, which is great. Uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to have I missed. I think I've got everything as myself. EdinburghDusters.co.uk. If you want to buy some cleaning, you can get some cleaning services. I'll happily come and quote for you and uh, see what you need done. But anyway, um, that's enough of that. We will have 60 Second Singing Tips coming in the show. It's back with my guest, Darren King, uh, who is all the way from Australia. He's not a Steve Irwin, Steve Irwin wannabe, and of course he wants to stay away from the crocodiles. But we'll be, <laughs> but we'll be back with, uh, we're back now with Darren, and let's have part two of what he, uh, the next stage. After he's done his motivational books, he's now at the stage that he is now going to start his fitness, his teaching, uh, his next stage of his life that he's now feeling that person he can go out there and conquer the world so let's have it Darren yeah okay so back to me I'm assuming yes uh, back to you so <laughs> okay. just uh, sorry I was just right. <laughs> <laughs> that's alright so yeah so Crocodile and D yeah, I love that um, I used to feel like I was the uh, a bit of a Crocodile Dundee and um, take on the wild and that sort of stuff and it's funny that we speak about that because I see a lot of people that are really competitive and hard on themselves and com- like a comparison thing from childhood where they're trying to prove something to their parents or you be better than your brother or sister. And, uh, you know, it's like a bit of a battle from the old days that there's still that in the adult body being the kid. And I actually had that where I was trying to do all this prove that I'm good enough. And I see that time and time again with clients is that how they struggle. They're always trying to do more and more and more chasing the carrot even when you get there, you feel like it's not good enough. And I find that is a, a big struggle with a lot of people that actually struggle with insomnia or depression, anxiety, and all these concerns and worries. That, that, you know, they're really harsh on themselves. And, and I found I stopped being so competitive. I still got that initial thing, but it's good to be able to step back. And like I spoke about earlier, if you're able to step back and look at, see yourself snoring or in this word, in, in this sort of context, is that to step back and see yourself like, I don't have to actually compete so hard anymore. Why do I want to drive myself into the ground? And so for anyone else out there that's doing that, you can actually chill out a bit more, relax. You can go hard. The harder you go, you need more time you need to relax. But I see a lot of people that are competitive and they find it hard to slow down and actually have time out for themselves or get that balance, you know, do a bit of meditation or even silence. You know, go and sit on the beach, relax, get in touch with nature without having 
to do hard stuff all the time or competitive stuff all the time. Um, yeah, even people, even people I've noticed that um, when I say to them, so what do you do for time out? What do you do for relaxation? They go, oh, I'm going to do a yoga session. But, you know, it's an intense yoga session. But a lot of people find it hard to sit still. And that's one thing that um, Deepak Chopra talks about is that silence is golden. And actually you have to step back, step back. And actually it's okay. You, time won't speed away that quick. It's funny when you do a really deep meditation, mm-hmm. sometimes it can seem like it's been hours and, it's, you know, it's only been 15, 20 minutes. Uh, you can actually slow time down when you when you slow down. Cool. So what, what would you – mean? You know, What's now that you've uh, obviously read all these books, and for you going forward, what was your next plan in your life that you've now kind of got yourself kind of in a on a level playing field with what you've been through? Uh, what was your next thing thoughts on how to go forward? You, you mean currently? Yeah, well, not necessarily currently, but uh, I mean you've obviously gone through all this kind of inside. You're sort of, uh, yep. in, sorting out the inside of your body with all the stuff that's going on in your life. Uh, you're now yep. at the stage that you've read all these motivational yep. books. You've, where's your, what, what was like, okay, what do I do now? I'm now, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling on top of the world. I've, I'm in a good shape. Uh, what was my next day? You've got your fitness. You've got, you obviously, you've got your fitness that you do. When did you kick off the fitness? Mm. And when did you, uh, what, when you started doing all these, now becoming into a speaker as well? Yeah, sure. So, okay, the, so the last 20 years or so, the, the fitness has always been there. So even though I'm in London now, I've got clients back at home. Um, some I haven't been able to manage. So I've got some, some clients, look, I've got some trainers looking after them. So in other words, I still run like boot camps and I still run, I've got clients like from 10 to 15 years ago type thing that I've, that I've still got where they're fitness orientated, where they're one-on-ones and groups. And it's been, even though it's been, even though I'm transitioning, I've still, I'm still looking after my physical clients, if that makes sense, which I still coach them if they need that mindset work as well. And then from there, I'm actually gaining, I've got a few clients here in, in the UK as well and globally because I do some online courses like Affirmation, Mastery, Mind Mastery, and helping out people where I don't have to actually physically be there, but I still help people across the world globally. So, um, yeah, so I've still got my clients in Melbourne, Australia. If you haven't been to Australia, guys, you got to get there. I don't know if you've been there, Fraser, but you, everyone talks about, oh, it's on my bucket list. This is a big thing. You know, people say on their bucket list, but there's no date. There's no intention. You know, there's a, there's a sort of a half intention. But if you haven't been to Australia, you've got to get your butt there. That's one thing. And I've got cl- these amazing clients I've got back at home. They love me. I love them. And we've got this bondship or bond, amazing friendship and closeness. And it's hard to leave them at times, you know. But I've got still got that going. I know, you know, I'm still helping them out. But the main thing is, I spoke about before, is that I'm I'm shifting more towards the coach, the online coach, the online, you know, helping people in a more global. So if I'm going to change a million lives, um, it's not going to happen by being in person, one on ones. It's going to be more bigger workshops, integrating with other. You know, a lot more other speakers. I'm doing speaking here in, over in, in London. And I find you can get in a lot more buns on seats and get in front of a lot more people that way. And especially I love doing what you're doing. Like, I haven't been doing podcasts, but I've been doing <laughs> interviewing and webinars. And it may be coming soon, podcasts. But uh, the webinars, the whole Zoom and um, Be Lives and all this stuff, which I find I've got this huge passion of helping people, but only people that want to be helped. Yeah. And... And so much more energy, better energy, and you know to to change them. Yeah, you because know, we only need to get the ripple effect going. Oh, you and I, we're going to help a few people who can help a few people who help a few people, like yes. a network marketing type thing, but not with network marketing. But it's the ripple effect. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, before we well, come to our next bit, uh, but Dan obviously he's talked about his uh, obviously the spiritual journey that these road he's going down. We'll come back with uh, sixty eight second singing tips uh, and with Benita Charles. Uh, we'll have a maybe we might squeeze in our tune if we've got time. If not, uh, we'll uh, see how things go as the podcast develops. But also, uh, I mean, Kingdom Beads is our sponsor. Uh, if you're looking for semi precious gems, we have kingdombeads dot com. If you go to and you can, uh, Ifia Lethem is the owner and creator of these beads. Uh, so if you like, she does male and female versions. Um, 
I suppose they've got to be careful. You should say these these days, uh, say that these days, because there's a lot of people who might get offended at male and female these days, not to get political or anything. Um, but um, just to, but yeah, you can get some nice designs, kingdommeads.com, um, and uh, you have some fantastic designs. You, designs you can even design your own, and uh, depending on what the colours you like, you, uh, which are really nice designs. They do necklaces, do uh, bracelets, and depending on what you want, you can check out. And the, the don't don't worry about the cost there. It is actually there's a converter. And you convert it into either British pounds, American dollars, uh, the prices in Canadian dollars, just in case you think it is quite high. It's just because it's in the currency. But uh, check out www.kingdombeads.com and you, the links are in the show notes of our podcast and, and also on the show notes of our guest as well. Um, so we're back in a second after Benita Charles, all the way from New York City, the city that never sleeps, uh, from 60 Seconds Singing Tips. Hi, this is Benita Charles from BenitaCharles.com on Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders with your 60-second singing tip. Today's tip is about your image. Did you know that your image consists of your appearance, your communication, and your behavior? Your physical appearance is the first thing that people will see of you. Your message is what you communicate to the world in everything you do. Your behavior affects every aspect of your business and career. Make sure how you look, what you say, and what you do are always on brand of what you want to communicate to the world. It's the difference between success and failure. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for the next 60-second singing tip on Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders. Hi, this is Afia Letha from KingdomBeats.com. Proud to be a sponsor of Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders. And welcome back to Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders. Uh, we are back with, uh, as I say, we just had Beatty Charles there. She has given us some fantastic music to play. And I, as I say to people out there, if you've got music or you're an artist... When you get your music further afield uh, onto podcasts or to different countries or different listening audience, uh, you want to promote yourself out with your local area, send me your music. I'd love to hear it. I'll have a listen. If it's good enough, I will play it on the podcast. Uh, we, as I say, Ramsey on these Green Beyond Borders is to interview inspirational people from all over the world, bringing your brand to Scotland. And if it's bringing you to a, a platform that you have never had the opportunity before, so as I say, uh, I'm here to help, here to listen, here to t- uh, hear your story from becoming nothing to something. And uh, let's bring your brand to a new level, to across the waters, to different areas. As I say, it's getting out of your comfort zone. If you're not ready to get out of your comfort zone, stay where you are. As I say, you'll be st- uh, end of day, it's about moving forward, aiming for the top, aiming for a new challenge each day, each week, each year, whatever you choose to do. Reach for it, because the only way you'll move forward and develop and grow in life and what you do. So we're back with Darren King, our guest. How are you doing, Darren? Are you still with us? I'm feeling amazing, mate, and I'm, I'm still privileged to be here. And I love what you're talking about there, about getting out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. Exactly. Exactly. It's all about pushing. If you don't push yourself, you'll never grow, never do anything. And it is very, very, I have to admit, it's very, very easy to get lazy, especially over the Christmas period, because especially depending on what you're doing, the, things tend to sort of shut down because it's the kind of Christmas mode. And because everyone's busy, obviously, presents and sorting out Christmas dinners and all that stuff, the parties, it can generally shut down because everyone's just busy with family. It's that time of year. And when you've got that time in your hands, it can quite be quite difficult to. You want to, you enjoy the break, but it can be easy, very easy to get into that sort of lazy mindset again quite quickly if you're on the go all the. Excuse me, on the go all the time, constantly creating. I don't know if you found that at all during these kind of periods when it's kind of mass holiday time and it's when you're just sitting around, you think oh, crumbs. Oh, I need to be. You kind of you're sort of you're, you're you sort of feel a bit out of sync because you're constantly on the go. Yeah, well, I want to talk about that because most people put on two to four kilograms over the Christmas period. Mm -hmm. Now, also, most people don't have a plan before Christmas. And a lot of people will say to me, they say, I will get started after Christmas. I'm like, well, hang on. What's going to happen between now and over Christmas? You're going to put on two to four kilograms. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, yeah, because they won't have have good fun. You can still have good fun. I never put on weight over Christmas. Well, I probably have what once in my life. But you can... If you go into a different plan, depends on what people want. You know, how bad do they want something? Because 
Are you, are you going to wait till after Christmas or are you going to have some sort of plan where you can still have some fun and still manage to at least stay the same weight or lose a little, a few kilos, if that's the plan? The other thing I noticed with Christmas is there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of um, family pretend bullshit, which meaning they're like, oh, hey, going, oh, that's great. And, you know, compared to, you know, letting go, there's a lot of stuff that we don't let go with, with families. And, I say to some people, or I, say, well, I do Facebook Live stuff, I'm going to say, you know, how about this Christmas you actually forgive and let go and put that in the past because you still see this struggle with families. I don't know if you've noticed that in the UK here, um, but I noticed Australia is like the luckiest country in the world, but there's still a lot of this um, struggle with families because they did one thing to them back in, in so-and-so days. Um, so, yeah, so managing those stresses is so important, yeah. Um, cool. where, where, how, do you, how do you find it here? Well, I think, yeah, I think we tend because it's obviously, I think the, our weather doesn't really help. Uh, and it can be, mm. it can be, sometimes it can be mild, it can be quite cold. And I think it doesn't really, I like, think that's the reason uh, why a lot of us tend to stay indoors uh, during the, this time of year when, when it's the cold weather. Mm. Uh, not like mm. some of the places which do get cold, uh, but not as cold as here. And it's still feasible to go out and enjoy the sort of a bit of warmer weather. But uh, I think that could mm-hmm. be the, the reason, probably. But um, yeah, end of the day, it's uh, I think it's just like if we lived in like places in America, which is constantly hot, or places like in Australia that are constantly hot, we would um, mm. probably be out and about more and not have the would be sitting wrapped up with the heating on um, and trying trying to stay warm. So it can I think it's just a uh, especially good thing about Scotland. Well, good thing about Scotland is probably in some parts of the world with. During the winter, it, uh, you're looking at the shortest day. You're dark at half past three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's if it's a really rainy, miserable day, it's just a bit of joy. The last place you want to be is walking in town or out and about. You want to be in your house, wrapped up, just with a cup of tea or coffee, and watching whatever <laughs> a program or something, just relaxing, I, switching off. It's easy it's, to do, but if you're living in a but during the summer here, we because we have nice long nights, it doesn't get dark sometimes until about half past ten, eleven o'clock at night, close to the height yeah. of summer. It is great. It's uh, you're out and about. You love the lighter nights. It's it's only you've only got the best part of maybe four hours of I would say darkness. It doesn't really get properly dark if it's a nice clear night, and it's um, you really it's great. I and mean, it's these lighter nights just wake you up. And it's uh, fun, and it's uh, I think it's just that kind of because of the country we live in, the weather uh, is from one extreme to another. Um, it can sometimes men- hit you mentally a little bit, and you have to kind of keep yourself going just to kind of so the time passes quickly. But we're going. To, let's talk about briefly your spiritual journey side that you were going mm. into, and how you and what how that's developed your life, and then we'll go into briefly uh, what you're doing now to how you can how you're sort of helping your current clients. Through that, through your own journey, and also what your aim is for your goals for the future. Yeah. So, well, where I'm currently is that we saying where I'm currently? Well, oh, you're talking about yeah, your spirit. You've obviously gone down your spiritual route. Yep. Uh, talk about your that. Then you can tell us regarding your next, uh, what you're doing to help okay. your current clients, etc. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, what I'm making sure is that I be as consistent as I can. I'm not perfect, but as I coach my clients, I want to practice what I preach as well. So um, being consistent with meditations, because uh, I find meditation just, I don't know if you guys meditate or if your um, listeners meditate, but if you don't, it's worth taking up. Now, this is one thing I, I, I find works for me and others. If you have, if you have slipped up, if you have slipped up and you haven't been consistent as much lately, then you want to work back into it slowly, not rush back straight into it. So if you're, someone that's used to being meditating like myself 20 minutes a day, twice a day, and you haven't been doing it, which I haven't been. I must admit I've dropped off the bandwagon a bit, which happens. I'm not perfect. So to take it easy on myself, then I go back and do one meditation a day until I get I start to get back in the swing of things. So that's where I'm at is, is, is trying to be as consistent as possible, just like I, I teach my clients. And the spiritual journey for me is to keep things, keep it, the, keep taking off the checklist, um, but keeping it just easy keep it you know no taking the pressure off yourself taking the brakes off and actually just taking it nice and easy on yourself so you know make sure i do some reading make sure i I go to workshops and also make sure that i do my meditations 
if any of those go out of whack a little bit, I notice I'm not fully present or I'm not my 100% of what I am, my potential. Of course, I keep my exercise going as well. But what I want to say to people is that if you're not doing, if you haven't been, no, anything you haven't been doing consistently, you want to do baby steps, chunk it down a little bit. You don't, you don't want to do, you want to do small steps, something small. If you haven't done any of these at all, then I would suggest do something like a one minute, one minute meditation or one minute silence. If you're not used to meditating, just do one minute silence. You know, if you don't feel like you love yourself inside you, because you are the most important person in this world. Your kids or your other your family, they're they're number two. It sounds rough because we're like we're givers, you know, most of us. But we are number one. You gotta look after you number one. Okay, it's just like the oxygen mask on the plane. So I make sure I'm number one. I look after myself. And if you haven't been doing any of these, just start off with something small. Do one minute of something. So if you don't feel like you love yourself, start to do affirmations, I, I love you. In the mirror, I get clients to do it in the mirror. I love you. I love you. You know, do that for one minute. Put your timer on for one minute. If you haven't been doing meditate and you want to start, most people think think I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, but I'm doing anything at all. So my suggestion is, just like myself, you do, um, if you haven't done anything for a while, get back into it slowly. If you haven't been doing anything at all, just start off something like one minute. So one minute, either I, I love you, affirmation work, or meditation. That's all I'd say for now. Um, what I've been doing is, Consistency for most of the time, and if I drop off, I get back into it slowly. Just like your size, get back into it slowly. Anthony Robbins says, if you haven't been in the gym for a long time, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Walk back into the gym, do a couple of bicep curls, and then walk back out, it, walk back out again. Because the hardest thing is putting your runners on, or your sneakers, or whatever you want to call them here, mm-hmm. and then step into the gym. That's the hardest bit. It's not actually – It's once you get into it and you've been doing it for a few days, then you're okay. You're off and running again. Um now, moving forward is my spiritual journey. My my big big thing is to be consistent with my Breakthrough Mastery show, which I've spoken to you about as well. Um, I'd love to interview you, Fraser, as well, um, sure. return the favor. And, you know, we want to help each other impact the world as much as we can. So um, the Breakthrough Mastery show, uh, continue on that, get it back into the routine of doing it weekly. I had a few hiccups and challenges with Facebook Live. But keeping the interviews going, Keeping the um, networking game, which I've been doing massively here in London with Luke Scott and Simone Vincher, whatever his name is, the Italian guy, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know. Do you know Simone? I've never heard of him, though. No. Okay. Anyway, just these guys, I just I just love who they are and what they're about. So, you know, environment is key. You know, you want to keep hanging around the environment. And I'm going to a great workshop on the weekend. I don't ask you what it's called, but... I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I've been upgraded to VIP, even though I've got a free ticket, which is an absolute bonus. Must be the Australian thing. I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> looking forward, <laughs> looking forward to that. And uh, you know, getting um, interviewed by you, fantastic. Uh, I'm so privileged. Um, and I've got all these people I've met that want to be interviewed by me. So that's that, the spiritual journey for me. And when I go back to Australia, to continue on um, backing on my interviews and and stay, keeping in contact with you, amazing people in the UK. Plus, I've got some, you know, America and continue on with those guys. And when I get back, I'm actually going to be doing uh, what's called a head coach of uh, it's head coach of what's called a self-expressed leadership program in the Landmark Education Series. So I'll be doing that. Um, the thing, the thing is, for everyone, you are be, you become what you hang around. So you know that's what I'm about. Uh, uh, for me to change a million lives, I, I've got to hang around all these fantastic people and we, we move forth together and that's yourself and and all these other people so it's, it's not slipping back because it's easy to slip it's easy to fall off the bandwagon and then it's hard to get back into it so it almost reminds me when you're cycling and you've got a group in front of you it's easier when you're sort of at the back hanging around these guys if you fall back a little bit then you got to pedal half faster and then you can you can pretty much bugger yourself up until before you get back in the pack again so it's it's the it's trying to be as consistent as possible without putting too much pressure on yourself and keep that momentum going around that amazing environment, um, whether it's podcasts, radio, whether it's doing interviews, whether it's workshops, um, because I've got a hard goal and, uh, you know, I'm not just going to keep it to myself. I've got to share it. Like, like money, sharing, you know, giving out, you get back type thing. So where can, the, where can people connect with you uh, so if they want to get in touch with you? What are your platforms? Yeah, okay, my platform. Okay, so the easiest way probably, I, I'm a bit of a Facebook junkie. Um, and not just not just to show off in the Facebook land, but to impact with clients and that. So Facebook, Darren King. I've also got King of Fitness. 
Um, that's probably it for now. I'm working on Instagram. I am on Instagram, Darren King. I'm working on that at the moment. So if anyone knows, um, can give us a hand with that one moving forth. I'm working on that one at the moment uh, to help change more worlds. What else have we got? Um, yeah, look, I have got a website at the moment, but it's been revamped. But if you if you, you can always do a search, King of Fitness, um, sure. you're about to come up with Darren King. Uh, there's a few different copy King of Fitnesses, but the main thing is if you've got Darren King there, I am the King of Fitness. Um, but that will be changed to King of Spiritual Fitness. Stay tuned with that. Just drop us a line. I'll message you if you want to. Um, my, I'll, I'll give up my number if you want to communicate with me directly. I'm happy to do that. Uh, there's a plus six one. Plus six one, you can do WhatsApp if you want to. 0402-443-805. And I'm like Fraser. I've got a heart of gold. I've got this massive heart to share and genuinely share um, my commitment to helping people that, especially overcoming hurdles, like, you know, whether it's addictions, whether it's, um, you know, they're struggling with depression, really, you know, if it's, if it's um, wanting to reach your ideal weight, if it's hitting the therapy, I've got all these little avenues. So if you're not sure, just by all means reach out. Um, that, that's, you know, that's best you can do for now, I suppose. Yeah. There we go. Well, we want to thank uh, everyone who will listen to this, our viewers, uh, well, listeners, I should say. If you can't really view a podcast, it's quite difficult because uh, it's not a video. So uh, our listeners all over the world, I uh, want to thank you for our, the contribution to from Darren. And uh, we wish, as I say, look forward to our new platform soon, uh, what we're going to be doing. Uh, lots of ideas and lots of planning going forward. So uh, don't uh, don't be, as I say, uh, just hope we watch this space because things are going to be going up and having I'm excited, I'm excited for the, the going forward and just as I say making things bigger, better and the main thing is is to impact and, and impact in people's lives that's the main thing and what we're, what I'm doing and who the people I'm teaming up with doing the next stage so uh, it's going to be exciting, I want to thank Darren for coming on the Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders uh, we will have this new platform. As I say, we are not on Hearts Alive anymore. It was time to it was time to step up uh, the gears, go up the gears. I was trying to say, and uh, move on forward. It was uh, we. I think, it, but thank you for the uh, Hearts Alive for the opportunity to uh, utilize their platform and uh, but and build what I what's Ramsey Unleashed has become. And any day, it's uh, it's onwards and upwards. So thank you, Darren, for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Fraser. That's what legend. I look forward to talking to you soon. Okay, well, listen to everyone who's uh, listening. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll catch up with you on the next episode of Ramsey on the Going Beyond Borders. And we'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.